Senator Amy Klobuchar. Welcome to The Sunday Show. Well, thanks, Jonathan. It's great to be back. So, Senator, it's been months since the House passed the Women's Health Protection Act. That bill remains stalled in the Senate. Are there any renewed discussions on your side of the aisle about doing away with the filibuster in order to get it passed? Well, first, let's step back. Look at that House vote you just brought up. Not one Republican voted to codify Roe v. Wade into law and protect 50 years of women's rights. Not one. So, as it comes over to the Senate, um, I fear we're going to see the same thing. So, regardless of what the Senate rules are, and I think you know I do support getting rid of the filibuster. I know there's been exceptions for everything from um, compensation for space accidents, Jonathan, uh, to an exception to the filibuster for arms sales. I think we could do it here. But the point of it is, the real crux of this is that Republicans will not give us the votes. They will not give us the votes, uh, regardless, it appears, uh, to be able uh, to put this into law. Of course, we're trying. We think everyone should be on the record of where they are on codifying Roe v. Wade in this critical moment with this leaked opinion that goes farther than anyone could have imagined. Um, but this is the moment where we must have the vote. And from there, mm -hmm. if we are unable to get Republicans on this, we march straight to the ballot box. And I tell people this, you know that old slogan, don't get mad, vote? I say, get mad and vote. Mm -hmm. and, you know, um, Senator, Senators Collins and Murkowski um, have signaled that they're willing to take a second look at the WHPA. They've also, um, at least earlier this year, introduced um, their own legislation that includes uh, a conscience measure in it. Um, is that something you would go along with, their, their proposed legislation, if the WHPA doesn't pass? Well, obviously, we're going to keep talking to them. Uh, the fact that they're pro-choice and are willing to say it is really important. Um, but the point is, there's big differences between these two bills. Our bill puts Roe v. Wade into law, the protections of Roe v. Wade. Um, the issue I have with their bill is it actually cements into law um, some of the limitations that we've already seen. And we keep seeing states doing things. In Missouri, a bill just introduced mm -hmm. that says you can sue women if they try to cross the border uh, to seek an abortion. In Louisiana, a bill that is actually advancing that would make it a homicide um, to have an abortion after an egg is fertile. These are the kinds of things that we're seeing. And, of course, really shockingly, 15 now states looking at limitations on what we call medication abortion, which a lot of young women are doing, ordering um, a medication online. Mm -hmm. So all of this stuff is going on right now. So we have good reason to say no. Uh, we are going to put the um, all of the provisions of Roe v. Wade into law. That is the best way to protect a woman's right, um, best way uh, to say to the Supreme Court, no, you cannot strip away 50 years of women's rights. And our main point is this. Most of the public, 75 percent by some polls of the public, is with us. So the question really is, who should make these decisions, a woman and her doctor or Ted Cruz? Mm -hmm. Why would we not make sure that women have equal rights under the law? Why would we tell this generation, this new generation, I'm sorry, you're going to have less rights than your moms or your grandmas? That is the problem with this opinion. It is so intense in terms of what it says when he leads with the word abortion is not in the Constitution. We know a mm. lot of other things aren't in the Constitution either. The word privacy isn't in the Constitution. The word she is not in the Constitution, but he is in the Constitution 25 times. Mm -hmm. You know, Senator, you mentioned t uh, Senator Ted Cruz, but the most powerful Republican uh, in the Senate is Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. And he told USA Today in an interview that it is a possibility that Republicans would do away with the filibuster in order to get through a national ban on abortion. Your reaction to that? You see, uh, this is the problem. They're actually are talking about introducing a ban, or one proposal was only six weeks, essentially a ban, right? They're talking about a ban, and they've, of course, shown the ability to do this before when they rammed through the Supreme Court justices and changed the filibuster for that. So this, again, 
uh, gets to my argument that this is about the ballot box. If, in fact, uh, we can get to, say, 52 Democrats or even more with the fantastic candidates we have in the U.S. Senate out there, uh, including like Judge Beasley in uh, the state of North Carolina, um, she's an incredible candidate, uh, including Val Demings in Florida, including our candidates that we're um, about to uh, get through primaries in Pennsylvania and in Wisconsin, two critical states. In Ohio, you march through the country. We have an ability, uh, with the American women voting with us, and the polls show they are strongly with us on this, that they don't want to have their rights taken away, and the men that stand with them voting with us, um, that's what we're talking about in this election. This is on the ballot. Their rights are on the ballot. You know, Senator, folks who pay attention to this issue know that there's a connection between uh, poverty and access to abortion. So, with inflation at historic levels, cost of living increasing, and wages largely stagnant, is the government prepared, the federal government prepared for the number of women on welfare to drastically increase if they're forced to have children? You know, I don't think our Republican colleagues, who've been trying to do this for 50 years, by the way, and now all they want to talk about is a leak, instead of owning this, owning what they've wanted for all this time, I don't think they have at all um, dealt with the second question that you just asked. This is an economic issue in that, first of all, women who have less resources, women who are poor, um, this disproportionately hurts them, women of color. You think about a waitress in the heart of Texas who's got to make a decision, because she'd have to go maybe take a bus, get there, go 250-some miles, go to another state, and she doesn't have the days off. Is she going to quit her job to do that? Are they going to help with child care, um, which they have not done, turned us down every inch of the way when it comes to trying to put more resources into things like health care and child care? Um, that's the crux of the issue here. Uh, this is mm -hmm. also an economic issue for the women of this country. Mm -hmm. Real fast, Senator, because we're out of time, but I have to ask you this. How concerned are you that the United States of America could actually become the fictional Gilead uh, of Handmaid's Tale? Uh, this opinion is so extreme. When you look at the words, when they say abortion is not in the Constitution, he literally isn't taking us back. When you say he's taking us back to the 50s, it's not the 1950s, it's the 1850s. <laughs> he actually cites the status of abortion back then, when it was criminalized in the 1860s. Um, that's what the mindset is. And they have pushed through these extreme justices, who are not uh, are now on the highest court of the land. And but guess what? When that happens in America? That's why we have three branches of government. That's why you have a Congress who has to act. That's why you allow people in a democracy to go to the polls and push back with who they elect. So I am concerned about how extreme these justices are, what they're setting out to do, where they seem to have no respect for precedent or women's rights. And now it is on the people of this country to respond. Senator Amy Klobuchar from the great state of Minnesota, thank you very much, as always, for coming to The Sunday Show. It was great to be on. Thanks, Jonathan.